Let's add custom items to Minecraft 121 with Forge. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we found ourselves back in Taylor once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding custom items to our project over here with Forge. Obviously for 121 absolutely freaking awesome and this is going to be well as you can see by the length it's still a quite involved process but once again it is sort of one of those things where once you go through it once and you understood it it's going to be very very straightforward now for this we'll need in the tutorial mode package right click new package and this is going to be called item so this is where all of our item related classes are going to go and the first one is right click new java class called the mod items class over here in this case if this file dialog appears over here add file to git we'll simply hit add right here and you can see it then turns from a red class to a green class that simply means that before it wasn't added to the next commit for in terms of github but now it is now how is this class situated how does it look like it's going to be quite interesting first of all we will have a public static final and this is going to be a deferred register. So you can see it's called deferred register over here. And I can select this and hit the tab key to auto complete it, which will immediately import that particular class. We then need angle brackets because we need to tell it, okay, what type of register is this? Like, what are we actually registering? Well, in this case, registering items. So we put in the item class over here from net micro world item. We're going to hit tab to auto complete again, and then we'll call this items over here all caps basically and that's going to be equal to a deferred register dot create you can see it suggests this to us so what we can simply do is select it and press tab to auto complete this as well inside of the parentheses we want to say forge registries dot items here once again we can simply hit tab to auto complete this and it's going to import the forge registries class and then lastly after a comma over here tutorial mod dot mod id and once again tap to auto complete it and then ending all of it with a semicolon now as always all of the code is available down below and the first question is what the frick is even this as a highest level overview i of course somehow need to tell minecraft hey these are our items make sure that they are registered right so that they are actually in the game and that works with a deferred register now a deferred register can be of many different types it can do items blocks we can do creative mode tabs. There's all sorts of different things that we can basically register, obviously, right? All of those things we can, uh, you know, add via a mod to Minecraft. And for all of those, there exists deferred registers. And a deferred register has the highest level overview is a list that is basically given to Minecraft at the specific time that it needed, that is needed, basically. That is why it's a deferred register. Once again, highest level overview. That's way more below the hood. You can also hover over this and actually see a couple of examples and a little bit of a, well, control left click on this. And you can actually see certain comments over here that might be interesting and useful if you want to deepen your knowledge on this. But in this case, right now, what the only thing you really need to know is, hey, this is going to be a list of our items, right, that are going to be under our mod ID. And they are basically going to be registered at the right time. That's all we need to do. And that's all we need to know at this point. When you have a deferred register, we actually also need to register that way. Basically, we need to be able to tell Forge, hey, this is our deferred register for our mod ID. And for that, we're going to make a public static void register method. And that is going to have an I event bus as its parameter. Once again, tap to auto complete it. And then the parameter name is just event bus. And inside of the method, very straightforward, we are going to call the items deferred register dot register method passing in the event bus. So this is literally just me once again hitting tab to auto complete it. And there you go. That is the basic setup of the mod items class. And then this register method has to be called in the tutorial mod constructor. So below the Minecraft Forge event bus right here, what we'll do is we'll simply say mod items dot register. And then once again, that was the tab to auto complete it. And then mod event bus, you can see tab to auto complete it. And we're basically taking this event bus right here and just passing it into the register method. Awesome. And now the game, or rather Forge, knows about our, you know, quote-unquote list over here. And now we're actually registering an item there. It's going to be very straightforward. This is going to be a public static final. Basically, almost all of the time, all of your things that you're registering are going to be public, static, and final. That's just a convention in this case. And this is going to be a registry object here from NetMicroForge registries again. Once again, tab to autocomplete it. And this is also of a particular type. So angle brackets. And in those, we're going to say item because, well, this is a registry object of type item. The name here is going to be Alexandrite equal to 
items.register. So this is going to be the items deferred register dot register. And then we're going to pass in a name. You can see we need a string name parameter and then a supplier of an item. So the first thing is a string that's going to be Alexandrite. And then after the quotation marks, comma, and then we're going to make a supplier that's going to be an open and closing parentheses and then a dash and then a smaller then that's going to turn this little thing into an arrow that is a supplier. And what we want to supply is a new item, right? And this new item needs new item dot properties. And once again, I can hit tab to autocomplete this and end this all with a semicolon. And in theory, this is everything we're going to need. Now the item would be in the game. It wouldn't have a name yet, like a proper name. It would be a square with black and pink colors. So there wouldn't be really a lot of things in the game yet. It wouldn't even be in any of the different creative mode tabs. So in this case, this is a bare bones item. Let's first of all think about this. So when we have this, let's add it to an already existing creative mode tab. The way to do this very straightforwardly in our tutorial mode class, we have this add creative method right here. So what we can simply do is we can say if event dot get tab key is equal and that's going to be two equals. Basically, we're comparing over here. This is the comparison operator. If this is equal to the creative mode tabs dot ingredients exactly just tab to autocomplete it again if this is the case then we're going to say event dot accept and we will accept more items dot alexandrite and there you go so basically this is going to now add our custom alexandrite item to the ingredients tab pretty freaking awesome but what about the name and what about the texture well that happens in the assets folder and for that we're going to need to go to the resources so in the project window on the left side we're going to go to the resources and we're going to right click new directory called assets. What I basically am going to do is I'm going to create this structure. It is extremely important that this structure is exactly right. If there are any typos in there, you're going to run into many, many issues, meaning you might not have a proper texture. You might not have a name. So keep this in mind. This structure has to be exactly right. So resources, assets inside of the assets folder, we're going to make the tutorial mod folder or whatever your mod ID is. So this has to match your mod ID exactly. So this mod ID right here has to be the name of this folder. Inside of your folder named with as your mod ID, you're going to have three folders. The first one is the lang folder or L-A-N-G. Once again, tutorial mod, we're going to right click new directory called models, models with an S at the end. And then tutorial mod folder once again, right click new directory. And we're going to call this textures. Once again, make sure that this is written correctly. Textures with an S, so plural. Inside of the models folder, we'll then make a new directory called item. And the same thing happens in the textures folder. Right click new directory called item. So we're going to start at the lang folder. That is the folder that determines the languages as L-A-N-G, right? Lang should be sort of, it, it makes sense, right? And in this case, we will simply add a translation for the default language, which is en underscore us. So in the lang folder, we're going to right click new file called en underscore us dot json. Very important. Once again, this is written exactly like this en underscore us dot json. Once you have this, we can go into this file and we will see the structure is as follows. We're going to have a curly bracket. The closing curly bracket will generate automatically. Then we're going to have a string. This is the translation key. In this case, it's going to be item dot tutorial mod dot. And this is going to be Alexandrite. And then after the closing quotation mark, a colon and then another string. And that's going to be Alexandrite. Now, extremely important here. Where does this key come from? Well, let's think about this. We have an item, right, that we're registering under tutorial mod. And the name that we've given it right here is Alexandrite. That's literally the key. That's all we need to know for the key. And then we can translate it to a human readable name, which, as you can see, actually does include a uppercase character, right? The Alexandrite right here follows the same laws that the tutorial mod follows, basically no spaces and only lowercase characters. But that is why you have the translation, because now this name over here is going to be what is actually displayed. So let's say if I call this Alexandrite gem over here, right, with a space that is no issue whatsoever, that is going to be totally fine. And with this translation done, the next thing is the item model JSON file. So in tutorial mode models item, we're going to right click new file. And this is going to be the alexandrite.json. Very important that this is written correctly, alexandrite.json. And this is going to be quite interesting. I'm going to type this out. 
This is of course going to be available to you down below as well. And then I will explain once I've typed this out. So we're going to have a parent. The parent is going to be Minecraft colon item slash generated. Then we're going to have a textures object. This object is going to be or we're going to have a layer zero. And that layer zero is going to be tutorial mod colon item slash Alexandrite. Awesome. So what is this craziness? Well, well, the basic idea is as follows. This determines th how the item is going to be displayed as a model, basically, right? So the model, the parent over here is going to be item generated. What, what is this? Well, usually when you have normal items like a redstone or maybe a diamond or emerald, then the actual item inside of your hand is not really 2D, even though it's only a 2D texture. It's actually extruded a little bit into the third dimension. And that is what the parent right here does. Right? That's what the this parent does, the item generated. And then we define the texture and we define the texture as follows. This is in the tutorial mod namespace. So assets tutorial mod in the textures folder instead of the item folder. And then it's going to look for an alexandrite.png right here. And of course, well, we have that available as well. There we go. We got Alexandrite in the raw Alexandrite. So I'm, uh, you know, spoiling a little bit. But basically, we can simply drag those into the folder. And I'm going to hold control to copy them into there. I'm going to hit OK. And then you can see, there we go. We got both of those PNGs in here. So the Alexandrite.png is exactly what it's basically looking for. And now with this, if you can imagine, that is all of the steps to actually add the custom item. Now, it might look like it is a lot, but we'll see in just a second how to add a second item, because once everything like this is set up, the second item is exponentially easier. But yes, you will basically always need to register it like this, right? So these two lines over here are registering the item, then adding it to the creative mode tab right here, adding a translation, and then the item model JSON file, which points to your particular texture. But once all of those steps are through, what we can then do is simply over here at the top right corner, we can simply hit the run client over here and then jump into the game and see our item for the first time. All right, finds us back in Minecraft and let's go to the ingredients tab at the very bottom. And you can see there we freaking go. The Alexandrite gem has been added to the game. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And yeah, that is one item, but one is none. So let's take a look at adding a second item too. Right, like I said, you will be amazed at how fast the second item can be added. Now, we're going to basically go through this not too fast, but, you know, particularly, but also not particularly slow. Of course, we'll need another public static final registry object. Once again, when I have this and it's suggested, I simply had hit the tab key to autocomplete this. And there you go. Then there's going to be the raw Alec Alexandrite equal once again to items.register. And then the name here is, of course, raw underscore Alexandrite and then a supplier of a new item with new item dot properties and ending it with a semicolon. And now the thing is registered. So we can then go to the tutorial mods class over here and once again, say event dot accept mod items dot raw Alexandrite. Awesome. Now it is added to the creative mode tab in the en underscore US JSON file item.tutorialmod.raw underscore alexandrite. Exactly. And this is the, and this is the raw alexandrite. Awesome. And then lastly, we simply need an item model. We already have the texture over here. And the item model, there's a really, there's a really awesome trick. What you can do is if you have a working item model JSON file, what you can do is you can drag it into the same folder while holding control. You can see a little plus appears right here. And then it's going to duplicate that particular file. We can simply rename it to raw underscore Alexandrite, which is, of course, the name of our new item, right? We hit OK over here and then just change it to basically point to the raw Alexandrite texture right here in our textures folder. And that is it. So that is the second item added. And you can see significantly easier. And I'm telling you, as you add more items and also do this on your own, you will find that it's going to get easier and easier. It is just a thing of repetition, right? If you add 100 items like this, right? By item 45, you're going to be bored out of your mind because you're like, I know what I have to do. And that is exactly the point. You have to know what you have to do in order to add those items. And then you're basically going to be good to go. So just for the sake of argument, let's jump into the game one more time to see the second item too. All right. And in Minecraft again, and what we'll find in the ingredients tab is, of course, raw Alexandrite as well. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is two items added to Minecraft. And like I said, it is pretty freaking crazy. Once you've done it once, basically, you're going to be an absolute master. Freaking awesome. 
And that's it for this tutorial. In the next video right here, we'll learn about custom blocks as well. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.